I always say that I'm not one of those artists who are intellectual or analytical in the sense that I'm not so interested in the mathematics. And with Philip Glass, it's a bit of a challenge in that sense, but you soon discover that it's a very layered music in the sense that it's very mathematical, but it's also very emotional. And that combination of the analytical and the emotional, I think is, is perfect for, for me as an artist because I kind of see myself as the same. Um, and I'm not willing to let go of any of those qualities in that sense. So I think one of the things that happened when we found out that we can't perform to live audiences um, is my first fear was that we lose the intimacy, that we will lose this connection that only happens when you're present in the same space. There's something you feel the warmth of the other body in space. And then as I started, you know, researching and also we see so many examples of live streaming around us all the time since COVID started, you realize that there are other ways to create intimacy. So it's almost like looking at, at it through a different lens. I often refer to it as a director's cut in the sense that I get to choose from which angle you would see the piece. And in that way, hopefully, or maybe unwillingly, um, there's another piece of me that I get to share in that sense, or that you as an audience get to see, which is the way I would want the piece to be seen. When you're a conductor, you actually have back to the So I mean, you're making music with people and, and that sort of thing, but I kind of like not having to look at the audience and one of the first things Egan said to me is, by the way, you have a solo in this. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I often refer to a good performance as if, you know, it's like, you know, one of those nights that you're with your partner or with one of your best friends and you have a real heart to heart. Like once that happens and you have that heart to heart with someone, you know that you will love them forever. Mm. And I think that in many ways, that's what a good performance mm. needs to do to allow vulnerability and to allow a certain truth. Philip Glass has an approach to his music which is it's constantly defying one's expectations in terms of like how often something repeats and then when it changes and then it keeps coming back. Uh, but it always evolves. Each, each of these pieces is so unique. To describe the etudes, is very similar somehow to, to my COVID experience in that sense, that it was like, it, it was the unexpected. Right. It was like a looping or a different conception of time. Like our understanding of time has changed. A lot of choreographers use Philip Glass. Yes. But it's not a typical soundtrack to a dance performance. Understood. It's very hypnotic. Yep. It's very, you know, but then it almost became like a challenge of how do we inject movement. How do you get inside of it? Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly, in the story of it. And it became one of the most rewarding creative processes of my career. Oh, wow. so.